Hello everybody, this is Troy, RC Pongo on the forums, and we are going to continue our series on puzzle building. In the first uh, part, we looked at a little bit of the options, uh, the user preferences, and we discussed uh, a small amount of how the viewport works. Uh, I'm going to continue that here now. Uh, as we specified before, you can use the middle button uh, to pan and shift. Uh, holding shift down, you can pan and uh, without shift it'll orbit. I had specified previously that I, I have those reversed so, so I, I middle click to pan uh, shift to orbit. Uh, <clears throat> looking, at the, looking at the window you may have noticed this icon right here and if you ever left click uh, that moves to wherever you, you left click and for those of you wondering what that is that is a 3D cursor and what happens is whenever I create a new object in my scene it is going to create it at that position so wherever I click and create something uh, and I'll be able to use that to to my advantage uh, for things also if I wanted to say and I'll just go to a side view here if I want to rotate uh, my object which I can rotate I can actually set my object to rotate around that point uh, and so I can use custom you know, s use this cursor to place custom axis. Uh, if I wanted to rotate around a point, I could actually put it, uh, put the cursor right on the selected point, and then when I rotate, it's going to rotate right around that point. Uh, so those are the kind of things that you will use that for. If you ever uh, just want to get it back to the center, you can use Shift C, and that will also reset your viewport and put the cursor in the center. Also here if we have this side panel open which again is the end panel holding the end key uh, you've got position of any currently selected object but then if you look down a little ways uh, there's a 3d cursor area and you can actually see XYZ locations of the 3d cursor and I can move that over here uh, so I could position I could position that cursor in an exact place just by entering values here uh, just another way uh, that you're able to able to do that. Uh, to move an object in Blender, uh, there are several different ways. Uh, you can you can use the axis that you have available to you here. You can just grab an arrow and move it. Uh, I've got my. Uh, you you can move uh, based on any axis. You can uh, go up here to where your location is. You can you can drag along these, or you can type in exact values. Uh, but there's even faster way and the faster way is you can uh, you can hold you can press the G key on your keyboard G for grab and what that's going to allow is it's going to put it on your on your mouse uh, immediately and you can just simply move it around now by default it's going to be moving it in your screen space so if you look uh, over here um, on my location you can see my X my Y and my Z are all moving uh, say I just want to move that in the Z what I can do is hit Z and now it's only moving it in the Z or if I were to hit X <coughs> it would only move it in the X and I'm gonna right click to cancel that so what you would do if I want to move this just in the Z is I would go G Z <coughs> G Z and on top of that you can enter coordinates so uh, you can hit G Z and then a number. So I know that this object is two units uh, in size. Right here, I can see the dimensions. So what I can do is I can go G, Z, two, <coughs> and I can see now that this is moved exactly in the Z uh, two. Now, once you've moved an object away from zero, there's a very easy way to get it back to zero, and uh, even even more easy than just typing in zero here back in your your numbers and so if I um, if I have this moved over and I've got all these values here and I just want to put it back to zero I just hit alt G and it's gonna zero that all out and put it back on zero and you can see zeros <clears throat> now what is zero zero is the center of my object by default the center or the origin point is the center of this cube right here it does not need to be uh, I'm going to 
jump ahead a little bit here. I'm just going to hit edit mode and I'm just going to move this object. Uh, what I've done now is I've moved the object without moving the center. So now if I hit Alt G to center it, <coughs> you can see that uh, it didn't move my cube to the center. It just moved the the point to the center. And my object states it's at 0, 0, 0, even though it's clearly not. Uh, that's because it's registering this location, not not the cube. Uh, there's many different ways to move this. Um, and what you're able to do is, is set things up. When we set our cube up, this is how we're going to actually place all the pieces. Uh, for right now, I'm going to use the shortcut, which is Control-Shift-Alt-C. I know that's a mouthful. Uh, and I'm just going to say origin to geometry, which will place it uh, back in the center uh, of my cube. And at this point now, uh, you can notice my position has changed again because now my center is up here. If I hit Alt-G, it will center that. It will center my cube. So to create a new object in Blender, <coughs> the menu that we will use is Shift-A. And Shift A will allow us to add an object and we can choose from a, a number of things that we want to add. Generally you're going to be adding a mesh, uh, plane, a cube, uh, a cylinder, uh, these kind of shapes and if we remember they're going to be created on our cursor position which at this point is at zero zero that's good. Uh, other ways you can create those other than the Shift A menu are over he or down here there is an object menu uh, I'm sorry, add menu. And these are the same these are the same options just on this menu down here. Uh, otherwise on our tabs over here there's a create and again the same list. Uh, there's many different ways to do things so you just need to go with uh, what you're most comfortable with. These all do the exact same thing. So when we start building uh, I've mentioned grab uh, I also want to very quickly talk about rotate and scale. They're going to be exactly the same as grab except instead of the G you're going to use R. And just like with R, uh, if I hold it it's going to be rotating in screen space uh, which is which is kind of odd. It's how your view is. But if I want to rotate it around uh, I can see this red line right here and I know red is X, green is Y, and blue is not visible but it's Z. So if I want to rotate around X, I just hit X, and now I can rotate that object cleanly around X. I can also see over here uh, my number. I could just type in an exact number, and I can just hit Alt-R to revert me back to zero. Uh, scale, again, is going to be the same. And there's one following thing that I want to show about scale, and that is called applying scale. And to see this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, several objects here. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this with uh, Shift D and I'm just going to move it over and I'm going to instead of scaling it I'm just going to change the dimensions which is going to scale it um, but we can see what we have here so now I have one object that is 2 by 2 by 2 and one object that is 5 by 5 by 5 and then I'm going to duplicate that object. So it is the same as this object, except on this one, I'm going to hit Control A to apply. Uh, Control A uh, allows me to apply the location, the rotation, and the scale, or the scale, however I want to do this. If I apply my location, it's going to move my center point, uh, which I previously talked about, to the zero zero position without moving the cube. Uh, in this case I don't want to do that but I do want to apply the scale. Now nothing apparently changed here but a lot has actually changed. If we look at the scale 555 and this one is 555 but our scale here is 2.5 and our scale here is now 1 because I did the apply. Our original cube also has a scale of 1. Now where is this important? I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to make this bevel, I'm going to make this a bevel of um, 0.5 and add some sec 
segments there. And then I'm going to add this. I'm going to also make that 0.5, add some segments. And then I'm going to make this one a bevel. I'm going to say 0.5. And you can see the difference here. This is why we like to apply scale. This, even though these two are the same and the bevel value is identical, uh, the, this, because the scale has not been applied, it's applying the bevel as if it was still small. As a matter of fact, if I hit Alt S on this object, it will restore it one to one and it will look exactly like this. Um, if I take this object, if I were to scale it in different directions, you can see how the bevel will get all distorted. If I hit apply my scale, you'll see that my bevel reverts properly. And now my scale, even though my size on this is now 5 by 5 by 11.8 uh, here, um, my scale is at 1. So everything's been, been uh, neutralized, essentially. Uh, and we will be doing that in several, several areas. When I talk about applying scale, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. That will, I think, wrap it up for this section, and we'll move on to the next section.